Hello, today we get to read the story of Balak and Balaam <laughs> in Numbers, starting with chapter 22. Then the people of Israel set out and camped in the plains of Moab beyond the Jordan at Jericho. And Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was in great dread of the people because they were many. Moab was overcome with fear of the people of Israel. And Moab said to the elders of Midian, This horde will now lick up all that is around us as the ox licks up the grass of the field. So Balak, the son of Zippor, who was king of Moab at the time, sent messengers to Balaam, the son of Beor, at Pethor, which is near the river in the land of the people of Amah, to call him, saying, Behold, a people has come out of Egypt. They cover the face of the earth, and they are dwelling opposite me. Come now. Curse this people for me, since they are too mighty for me. Perhaps I shall be able to defeat them and drive them from the land. For I know that he whom you bless is blessed, and he whom you curse is cursed. So the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the fees for divination in their hand. And they came to Balaam and gave him Balak's message. And he said to them, Lodge here tonight. And I will bring back word to you as the Lord speaks to me. So the princes of Moab stayed with Balaam. And God came to Balaam and said, Who are these men with you? And Balaam said to God, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent to me, saying, Behold, the people have has come out of Egypt, and it covers the face of the earth. Now come, curse them for me. Perhaps I shall be able to fight against them and drive them out. <laughs> God said to Balaam, You shall not go with them. You shall not curse the people, for they are blessed. So Balaam rose in the morning and said to the princes of Balak, Go to your own land, for the Lord has refused to let me go with you. So the princes of Moab rose and went to Balak and said, Balaam refuses to come with us. Once again, Balak sent princes more in number and more honorable than these. And they came to Balaam and said to him, Thus says Balak, the son of Zippor, Let nothing hinder you from coming to me, for I will surely do you great honor, and whatever you say to me, I will do. Come, curse this people for me. But Balaam answered and said to the servants of Balak, Though Balak were to give me his house full of silver and gold, I could not go beyond the command of the Lord my God to do less or more. So you too, please stay here tonight that I may go, that I may know what more the Lord will say to me. And God came to Balaam at night and said to him, If the men have come to call you, rise, go with them, but only do what I tell you. So Balaam rose in the morning and saddled his donkey and went with the princes of Moab. Wow, there's a problem there. <laughs> but God's anger was kindled because he went and the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as his adversary. Now he was riding on his donkey and his two servants were with him. And the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand. And the donkey turned aside out of the road and went into the field. And Balaam struck the donkey to turn her into the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path between the vineyards with a wall on either side. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she pushed against the wall and pressed Balaam's foot against the wall. So he struck her again. <laughs> then the angel of the Lord went ahead and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn either to the right or to the left. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she lay down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he struck the donkey with his staff. <laughs> then, then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey, and she said to Balaam, what have I done to you that you have struck me these three times? <laughs> don't you wonder? Don't you wonder what that voice sounded like? It was like, oh, don't you. <laughs> I just 
wonder. I mean, I'm sure he used the donkey's own voice. <laughs> and that sound must have been so unique and so creative. <laughs> uh. And Balaam said to the donkey, because you have made a fool of me, I wish I had a sword in my hand and then I would kill you. And the donkey said to Balaam, am I not your donkey on which you have ridden all your life long to this day? <laughs> I wish I could imitate the donkey. <laughs> I want to make it sound like a donkey, <laughs> but I can't do it. it uh, the donkey continues. Let me start over. The donkey says, am I not your donkey on which you have ridden all your life long to this day? Is it my habit to treat you this way? And he said, no. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam. And he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand. And he bowed down and fell on his face. How, this is my, this is me interjecting again. How many times, how many times, <laughs> how many times do you think that happens to us? <laughs> Where there's an angel of the Lord there to protect us. And we get mad because things don't go our way. Wow. Forgive us, Father. Forgive us, Father. Open our eyes to see, to see what you're doing and to hear what you're saying and open our hearts to move with you, that we would move with you. <laughs> um, then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his sword drawn in his hand. And he bowed down and fell on his face. And the angel of the Lord said to him, why have you struck your donkey these three times? Behold, I have come out to oppose you because your way is perverse before me. The donkey saw me and turned aside before me these three times. If she had not turned aside from me, surely just now I would have killed you and let her live. Then Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned for I did not know that you stood in the road against me. Now, therefore, if it is evil in your sight, I will turn back. And the angel of the Lord said to Balaam, go with the men, but speak only the word that I tell you. So Balaam went on with the princes of Balak. Wow. I, I don't think I would want to. I think I'd want to turn back. <laughs> when Balak heard that Balaam had come, he went out to meet him at the city of Moab on the border formed by the Arnon at the extremity of the border. And Balak said to Balaam, did I not send you to call you? Why did you not come to me? Am I not able to honor you? Balaam said to Balak, Behold, I have come to you. Have I now any power of my own to speak anything? <laughs> Sorry. The word that God puts in my mouth, that must I speak. Then Balaam went with Balak, and they came to Kirath Huzoth. And Balak sacrificed oxen and sheep, and sent for Balaam and for the princes who were with him. And in the morning, Balak took Balaam and brought him up to Bamoth Baal. And from there, he saw a fraction of the people. Chapter 23. And Balaam said to Balak, build for me here seven altars and prepare for me here seven bulls and seven rams. Balak did as Balaam had said. And Balak and Balaam offered on each altar a bull and a ram. And Balaam said to Balak, stand beside your burnt offering and I will go. Perhaps the Lord will come to meet me and whatever he shows me, I will tell you. And he went to a bare height and God met Balaam. And Balaam said to him, I have arranged the seven altars and I have offered on each altar a bull and a ram. And the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, return to Balak and thus you shall speak. And he returned to him, and behold, he and all the princes of Moab were standing beside his burnt offering. And Balaam took up his discourse and said, From, er, from Aram Bel... <laughs> Try, I'm having problems getting the syllable in the right place. <laughs> from Aram, Balak has brought me, the king of Moab from the eastern mountains, Come, curse Jacob for me, and come, denounce Israel. How can I curse whom God has not cursed? How can I denounce whom the Lord has not denounced? 
For from the top of the crags I see him, from the hills I behold him. Behold, a people dwelling alone and not counting itself among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob or number the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the upright and let my end be like his. And Balak said to Balaam, what have you done to me? I took you to curse my enemies and behold, you have done nothing but bless them. And he answered and said, must I not take care to speak what the Lord puts in my mouth? <laughs> and Balak said to him, excuse me, <laughs> I just let her out right before I started reading. <laughs> she just wants to go sit outside, I guess. And Balak said to him, please come with me to another place from which you may see them. You shall see only a fraction of them and shall not see them all. Then curse them for me from there. And he took them to the field of Zophim, to the top of Pisgah, and built seven altars and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Balaam said to Balak, stand here beside your burnt offering while I meet the Lord over there. And the Lord met Balaam and put a word in his mouth and said, return to Balak, and thus shall you speak. And he came to him, and behold, he was standing beside his burnt offering, and the princes of Moab with him. And Balak said to him, What has the Lord spoken? And Balaam took up his discourse and said, Rise, Balak, and hear. Give ear to me, O son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie, or a son of man that he should change his mind. Has he said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, and will he not fulfill it? Behold, I received a command to bless. He has blessed, and I cannot revoke it. He has not beheld misfortune in Jacob, nor has he seen trouble in Israel. The Lord, their God, is with them, and the shout of a king is among them. God brings them out of Egypt and is for them like the horns of the wild ox. For there is no enchantment against Jacob, no divination against Israel. Now it shall be said of Jacob and Israel, what has God wrought? Behold, a people, as a lioness, it rises up, and as a lion, it lifts itself. It does not lie down until it has devoured the prey and drunk the blood of the slain. <laughs> and Balak said to Balaam, Do not curse them at all, and do not bless them at all. But Balaam answered Balak, Did I not tell you all that the Lord says that I must do? And Balak said to Balaam, come now, I will take you to another place. Perhaps it will please God that you may curse them for me from there. So Balak took Balaam to the top of Peor, which overlooks the desert. And Balaam said to Balak, build for me here seven altars and prepare for me here seven bulls and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had said and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Wow. God tried to save him from it. He tried to tell him no. <laughs> Chapter 24. When Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he did not go as at the other times to look for omens, but set his face toward the wilderness. And Balaam lifted up his eyes and saw Israel camping tribe by tribe. And the spirit of God came upon him and he took up his discourse and said... The oracle of Balaam, the son of Peor, the oracle of the man whose eye is opened, the oracle of him who hears the words of God, who sees the vision of the Almighty, falling down with his eyes uncovered. How lovely are your tents, O Jacob, your encampments, O Israel, like palm groves that stretch afar, like gardens beside a river, like aloes that the Lord has planted, like cedar trees beside the waters, Water shall flow from his buckets, and his seed shall be in many waters. His king shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. God brings him out of Egypt, and it is for him like the horns of the wild ox. He shall eat up the nations, his adversaries, and shall break their bones in pieces, and pierce them through with his arrows. He crouched, he lay down like a lion, and like a lioness, who will rouse him up? Blessed are those who bless you, and cursed are those who curse you. <laughs> and Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam, and he struck his hands together. And Balak said to Balaam, 
I called you to curse my enemies, and behold, you have blessed them these three times. Therefore, now flee to your own place. I said, I will certainly honor you, but the Lord has held you back from honor. And Balaam said to Balak, Did I not tell your messengers whom you sent to me? If Balak should give me his house full of silver and gold, I would not be able to go beyond the word of the Lord to do either good or bad of my own will. What the Lord speaks, that will I speak. And now behold, I am going to my people. Come, I will let you know what this people will do to your people in the latter days. And he took up his discourse and said, The oracle of Balaam, the son of Beor, the oracle of the man whose eye is open, the oracle of him who hears the words of God and knows the knowledge of the Most High, who sees the vision of the Almighty falling down with his eyes uncovered. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob. A scepter shall rise out of Israel. It shall crush the forehead of Moab and break down all the sons of Sheth. Edom shall be dispossessed. Sair also his enemies shall be dispossessed. Israel is doing valiantly. And one from Jacob shall exercise dominion and destroy the survivors of cities. Then he looked on Amalek and took up his discourse and said, Amalek was the first among the nations, but its end is utter destruction. And he looked on the Kenite and took up his discourse and said, Enduring is your dwelling place, and your nest is set in the rock. Nevertheless, Cain shall be burned when Asher takes you away captive. And he took up his discourse and said, Alas, who shall live when God does this? But ships shall come from Kittim, and shall afflict Asher and Eber, and he too shall come to utter destruction. <laughs> then Balaam rose and went back to his place, and Balak also went his way. <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness. It's so important to listen to the voice of the Lord the first time <laughs> and not ask him to change his mind. Unless, of course, you're working on the behalf of people like Moses did. He interceded on the behalf of people, but these people were wanting to curse Israel. He should have known not to go with them. But anyway, that was today's reading. <laughs> um, so tomorrow we'll pick up in Numbers chapter 25. It's always a pleasure reading with you. Thank you so much for meeting with me. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow.